your number one news team covering the North. The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Welcome back. Health officials in the Western District this past weekend for the administration of the AstraZeneca vaccine. Residents of the 8 Mile Rock and West End community turning out at the 8 Mile Rock Community Clinic to receive the jab. Community Administrator Sonia Nesbitt says that they have gotten a great response from persons in that community. So persons here today are a mixture of persons who have registered online and persons who are walk-ins and so we have open slots for 250 persons and we have documented so far today 181 persons who actually went online. We have um, immunized approximately for the island of Grand Bahama since we started on the 21st of March over 3,000 persons. Now today, officials were mobile taking the vaccine to elderly persons who are unable to go to the clinic. Nesbitt says on Tuesday, April 20th, the health team will be in the Hawksville area. So we do have lists where we would actually go into the homes and we would be immunizing clients. We still would have a team at the Susan J. Wallace building. And then if all goes well, we would be in the Hawksville clinic where we would um, focus on persons uh, in the Hawksville, Hunters, Lewis Yard area, where they would come to the clinic and we would immunize them. The 2021 year's Junkanoo Parade was postponed on Grand Bahama due to the outbreak of COVID-19 that limited group gatherings on the island. Restrictions have since been imposed to ensure crowd control, raising the question as to when and if Junkanoo will return in January of 2022. The Minister of Youth, Sports and Culture, the Honorable Ira Lewis, giving this update on the possibility of Junkanoo returning to the streets of Grand Bahama. It was a lot more challenging than in New Providence because of, of the effect of Hurricane Dorian where most of the groups would have lost um, not only their shock but all of their inventory. Um, so while we were in the process or the individual groups were in the process of restoring and rebuilding then here comes the pandemic and of course because of social distancing and, and all of the protocols um, all of that had to be put on hold. But the intention is to bring Junkanoo back bigger and better than ever. Um, we, are, we are trying to get the individual group and, and other enterprising behaviors to think out of the box and see how we can now bring, bring Junkanoo back in a more safe environment, um, bring it back to the community and also how we can monetize it. Money Leary, cultural officer with the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Culture here on Grand Bahama says that the ministry has been in contact with the various group leaders. She says that they're also working on other projects in the interim to bring Junkanoo's together. We've been currently uh, still communicating with all of the Junkanoo groups. Uh, we have our Zoom meetings as well as we have been engaging in training. Some of the groups have taken on training their members to be ready for whenever the government has allowed the Junkanoo Festival to begin. Of course, you know, as I said all the time, is that it is the spirit of our people and the music. And so through the different cultural, for example, we have the E. Clement Bethel National Arts Festival about to go on. We will be pushing the groups to enter their music category, dancing categories, and just engage them whatever we can to prepare for whenever that time comes around. Switching gears now, dental hygiene refers to the practice of keeping the mouth, teeth, and gums clean and healthy to prevent disease. In tonight's Holistic Health segment, our Jamila Mizik talks to a dentist about the best practices for healthy teeth. Did you know that the mouth is described as the gateway to the entire body? And if not properly cared for, it can lead to other health issues down the line. Well, today we talked to general dentist Dr. Charlene Reed Morris about the dangers of poor dental practices. It can cause other diseases like diabetes. It can cause women to lose um, their baby prematurely, um, a whole host of things. And so it's important to maintain good oral health. Um, and ways that you can do that is by brushing daily and visiting your dentist every six months. But she says good dental practices should start at an early age. Parents tend not to bring their kids for routine procedures, only when there's severe problems. And this is kind of unfortunate because it teaches the child um, to fare the dentist. 
And so we would prefer to see them early on to prevent any kind of you know, abscesses or cavities. And um, I know that a lot of parents don't see it as important, but it, it really, really is. The primary teeth, the baby teeth, tend to be guides for the permanent teeth. And sometimes when you let um, abscesses or cavities form on those baby teeth, they tend to cause the permanent teeth damage. Not only that, um, if you remove those teeth prematurely, because they are guide teeth for the permanent teeth, they tend to shift and move and change the entire way that the mouth is supposed to look and even the face of the child. So when you take it into your own hands, not knowing all the theory and all the practice behind it, it kind of puts your child at a disadvantage. With most um, babies, in order for them to be quiet, we tend to push the bottle in their mouth and we don't brush them afterwards. It's good that we train the kids from early on to brush frequently, to even take a toothbrush to school so that after lunch they can brush, um, to clean their tongues and to teach them how to floss because disease actually starts in between the teeth more often than um, other surfaces. And so it's important for us to get the kids um, acclimated to brushing and flossing frequently. And like I said, even at school, so that you know that after every meal, they're brushing. And she says brushing your tongue is equally as important. After you eat, a lot of the particles are left on the tongue. So it's good to kind of get a good clean in. Now a lot of toothbrushes have the tongue scraper at the back of the toothbrush so you can use it. Now I have to say clean the tongue and not scrape as well as get a good rinse afterwards just to leave a clean surface. Dr. Reed notes that the leading cause of tooth loss in the Bahamas is gum disease. It's because of the high prevalence of diabetes in our society and I think it also has something to do with what we eat and, and how we eat. We eat a lot of fatty foods, and we also tend not to brush as frequently as we're supposed to. So that is the leading cause. And what happens is once you've gotten to a certain stage of that gum disease, it's hard for you to get back to, you know, back to normal. So what you have to do once you've been diagnosed as having gum disease is to try to maintain it so that it doesn't get any worse. Until next time on Holistic Health, I'm Jamila Mizik. And that's a look at stories making news. Let's check in on sports with our Jay Philippe. Good evening, I'm Jay Philippe and welcome to Sports. The Ministry of Youth Sports and Culture in conjunction with the National Sports Authority made a major donation to the YMCA. Brand new state-of-the-art computerized swimming starting blocks was donated to the YMCA. The Minister of Youth Sports and Culture, the Honorable R.M. Lewis, saying that he saw the need to get the equipment for the swimmers at the pool as soon as possible. Now we realize that aquatics um, is very important and the President, um, Mr. Algernon Cargill, um, in partnership with NSA advice um, that, that you know, request was made to have the facilities um, upgraded once again. The NSA and Director of Sports bring into action. We discovered that we had some more upgraded starting blocks at the Betty Kenning um, Center in Nassau um, that could have been utilized in Grand Bahama. The, the NSA um, sent some, uh, through the Aquatics uh, Association, sent some starting blocks down here in recent times. But we found more um, state of the art mm -hmm. um, adjustable blocks with the, with the touch pads. Um, for automatic timing, and um, I, I'm being told that the value of, of those um, these starting blocks uh, exceeds some thirty thousand dollars. Lewis says the other swimming pools on island will be receiving donations as well. He knows that there is a lot more work to be done for aquatics. I'm advised by the president, Mr. Cargill, again that plans are underway for a major aquatic center um, to be constructed in Grand Bahama, uh, in partnership with, with the Grand Bahama Port Authority and other other private um, corporate citizens. Um, so again, uh, once those plans are finalized, uh, we will make the announcement and um, we, we intend to again construct a world-class aquatic uh, facility in Grand Bahama and uh, throughout the islands of the Bahamas. Playing an intricate role in ensuring that the starting blocks were available was General Manager of the National Sports Authority, Quentin Brennan. I know what it is to have the proper facilities. Minister Lewis just mentioned also so that people can make a living, but there are numerous of individuals who can now come here at the YMCA, learn how to swim, free college education, and the list goes on and on and on and on. So again, great equipment, great facilities means the world to everybody. 
Switching gears now in women's hoops action, John Quell Jones and a UMMC Ekaterinburg European League basketball team won the FIBA European Women's Championship with a 78-68 win over Perfumis Avenida. Jones just missed out on a double-double in the championship game, scoring 9 points while grabbing 11 rebounds and blocking 2 shots in the contest. Jones will now shift her focus to the WNBA, where the season is expected to start May 14th. And that's a quick check on sports. I'm Jay Philippe. Be blessed.